today we're going to explore the subject of tithing. Some key scriptures here are Exodus 23 verse 29 Thou shalt not delay to offer the first of thy ripe fruits of thy liquor, the firstborn of thy sons shall thou give unto me. And it goes on, um, you can check these out. And uh, also Leviticus chapter 27 30 and all the tithe of the land whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree is the lord's and is holy unto the lord and um, it goes on basically concerning the tithe of the herd of the flock even whatsoever passeth under the rod the tenth shall be holy unto the lord so this is a levitical tithe um some tithes you aren't able to do because um, unless it's a temple in jerusalem um, even Judaism is very loosely based on these laws but we can actually draw some resemblance of how we should tithe today and I'll read all these out um, from from the website now the famous quotation from Yeshua was in Matthew 23 woe to you scribes and Pharisees hypocrites for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the way to your matters of the law judgment mercy and faith these odds you to have done, and not leave the others undone, you blind guides, which strain a gnat and swallow a camel. So clearly here Yeshua was telling them the first part of the tithing was acceptable to God, but um, they were obviously neglecting greater parts of the Torah. And for for example, Deuteronomy 26, 12, when thou hast made an end of tithing all the tithes of thine increase the third year, which is of the tithing laws, and has given it unto the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, that they may eat with thy gates and be filled. Okay, that's every three years. There is also a tithing to the stranger, fatherless, and the widow, according to the law there. And I, I suspect that this would be the type of law that Yeshua was actually um, speaking about, which wasn't being properly fulfilled in Israel. So please continue to pray for our projects in East Africa and for Jeshurun. And again, if you're interested, and there's a growing list of obviously people interested in sponsoring children, where you'll be able to basically write to them and find out how they're developing. Um, I think it's about $20 a month we've decided about that one. So these are about the temple offerings here. And so as a lot of these offerings were done away with, Circumcision um, was also done away with for the Gentiles. Um, but let's read these out anyway. That the uncircumcised person shall not eat of the truma, which is the offering. The same applies to the other holy things. This rule is inferred from the law of the Paschal offering. By similarity of phrase, Exodus 12, 44-45, Leviticus 22:10 is not ex um, explicitly set forth in the Torah. Traditionally, it has been learnt that the rule that the uncircumcised must not eat holy things and is an essential principle of the Torah and not enactment of the scribes. Not to alter the order of separating the Troma and the tithes, separation being the order of first fruits at the beginning, then the Troma, then the first tithe, and the second tithe, Exodus 22:28 to give a half shekel every year to the sanctuary for provision of the public sacrifices Exodus 30.13 that a Kohanim who is unclean shall not eat of the truma Vegas 22.3-4 person who is not a Kohanim or the wife of an unmarried daughter of a Kohanim shall not eat of the truma Vegas 22.10 that the, a sojourner with a Kohanim or his hired servant shall not eat of the truma Vegas 22.10 not to eat tevil, something from which the truma and the tithe have not yet been separated, Leviticus 22.15. To set apart the tithe of the produce, one-tenth of the produce after taking out truma for the Levites, Leviticus 27.30, Numbers 18.24. To tithe cattle, Leviticus 27.32. Not to sell the tithe of the herd, Leviticus 27.32.33. The Levites shall set apart a tenth of the tithes which they have received from the Israelites and give it to the Kohanim called the Teruma of the tithe Numbers 18.26 not to eat the second tithe of cereals outside Jerusalem Deuteronomy 12.17 
not to consume the second tithe of the vintage outside Jerusalem, Deuteronomy 12.17, not to consume the second tithe of the oil outside Jerusalem, Deuteronomy 12.17, not to forsake the Levites, Deuteronomy 12.19, but their gifts dues should be given to them that they might rejoice therewith on each and every festival. Um, to set apart the second tithe in the first, second, fourth and fifth years of the sabbatical cycle to be eaten by its owner in Jerusalem, Deuteronomy 14.22 Today is set aside but not eaten in Jerusalem. To set apart the second tithe in the third and sixth year of the sabbatical cycle of the poor, Deuteronomy 14, 20, 29. Today it must be separated out, but need not be given to the poor. Interesting. To give the Kohen in the due portions of the carcass of the cattle, Deuteronomy 18.3. To give the first of the fleece to the Kohen in, Deuteronomy 18.14. To set apart Truma, Gadola, the great heave offering, that is a small portion of the grain, wine and oil for the Kohen in, Deuteronomy 18.4 not to expend the proceeds of the second tithe on anything but food and drink, Deuteronomy 26.14. Anything outside of things necessary for sustenance comes within the class in this phrase, um, given for the dead. Well, I'm not sure what that would mean. Not to eat the second tithe even in Jerusalem in the state of uncleanliness until the tithe had been redeemed, Deuteronomy 26.14. Not to eat of the second tithe when morning, Deuteronomy 26.14. To make the declaration when bringing the second tithe to the sanctuary, Deuteronomy 26.13. Again, these next laws can be loosely based on, you know, for example, how to build a church. It's about the temple, the sanctuary and sacred objects. So it's saying not to build an altar of hewn stone, Exodus 20.22. Not to mount an altar by steps, Exodus 20:23. 20, to build the sanctuary, Exodus 25:8. Not to remove the staves of the ark, Exodus 25:15. To set the show bread and frankincense before the Lord every Shabbat, Exodus 25:30. In that case, it would be the Lord's Supper. To kindle lights in the sanctuary, Exodus 27:21. That the breastplate shall not be loosened from the ephod, Exodus 28:28. 28, 28. To offer up incense twice daily, Exodus 37. Not to offer strange incense, nor any sacrifice upon the golden altar, Exodus 39. That the Kohanim shall wash his hands and feet at the time of service, Exodus 30, 19. To prepare the oil of the anointment and anoint high Kohanim and kings with it, Exodus 30, 31. Not to compound oil for lay use after the formula of the anointing oil, Exodus 30, 32, 33. Not to anoint a stranger with anointing oil, Exodus 30.32. Not to compound anything after the formula of the incense, Exodus 30.37. That he who in error makes unlawful use of the sacred things shall make restitution of the value of his trespass and add a fifth, Leviticus 5.16. To remove the ashes from the altar, Leviticus 6.3. To keep fire always burning on the altar of the burnt offering, Leviticus 6.6. Not to extinguish the fire on the altar, Leviticus 6.6. 6. That a Kohanin shall not enter the sanctuary with dishevelled tear, Leviticus 10.6. That a Kohanin shall not enter the sanctuary with torn garments, Leviticus 10.6. That the Kohanin shall not leave the courtyard of the sanctuary during service, Leviticus 10.7. That an intoxicated person shall not enter the sanctuary nor give decisions in matters of the law, Leviticus 10.9-11. To revere the sanctuary, Leviticus 19.30. Um, I guess it applies to churches, synagogues, and so on. That when the ark is carried, it should be carried on the shoulder, Numbers 7.9. To observe the second Passover, Numbers 9.11. That's if you missed the first one, of course. To eat the flesh of the Paschal lamb on it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs, Numbers 9.11. Not to leave any flesh of the Paschal lamb brought on the second Passover until the morning, Numbers 9.12. Not to break a bone of the Pesachal lamb, brought on the second Passover, Numbers 9.12. To sound the trumpets at the offering of sacrifices in times of trouble, Numbers 10.9-10. To watch over the edifice continually, Numbers 18.2. Not to allow the sanctuary to remain unwatched, Numbers 18.5. 
that an offering shall be brought by one who is in error committed to trespass against sacred things, or robbed, or lain carnally with a bond made betrothed to a man, or denied what was deposited with him, and swore falsely to support his denial. This is called a guilt offering for an own trespass, not to destroy anything of the sanctuary, or of the house of study, or erase the holy names of gods, nor may sacred scriptures be destroyed. Deuteronomy 12, 2-4 Okay, I'm going to move through these as quickly as I can. They're to do with sacrifices and offerings, um, most of which Yeshua fulfilled on the cross. Um, that's not to say that when the third temple is built and Yeshua returns, that the, there may be some free will offerings, as is written about in the book of Ezekiel and so on. So again, you can draw your own conclusions with these. To sanctify the firstling of clean cattle and offer it up, Exodus 13, 2, Deuteronomy 15, 19. To slay the Paschal lamb, Exodus 12, 6. To eat the flesh of the Paschal sacrifice on the night of the 15th of Aviv, Exodus 12, 8. Not to eat the flesh of the Paschal lamb raw or sodden, Exodus 12, 9. Not to give any portion of the flesh to Paschal sacrifice until the morning, unconsumed, Exodus 12, 10. Not to give the flesh of the Paschal lamb to an Israelite who has become an apostate, Exodus 12.43. Not to give the flesh of the Paschal lamb to a stranger who lives among you to eat, Exodus 12.45. So likewise with the church this would be re with regards to unbelievers. Not to take any of the flesh of the Paschal lamb from the company's place of assembly, Exodus 12.46. Not to break a, point, a bone of the Paschal lamb, Exodus 12.46. That the uncircumcised shall not eat of the flesh of the Paschal lamb, Exodus 12.48. Not to slaughter the Paschal lamb while there is shamets in the home, Exodus 23.18, Exodus 24.25. Not to leave the part of the Paschal lamb that should be burnt on the altar until the morning, when it will no longer be fit to be burnt, Exodus 23.18, Exodus 24.25. Not to go up to the sanctuary for the festival without bringing an offering, Exodus 23.15. To bring the first fruits to the sanctuary, Exodus 23.19. That the flesh of a sin offering and guilt offering shall be eaten, Exodus 29.33. That one not of the seed of Aaron shall not eat of the flesh of the holy sacrifices, Exodus 29.33. To observe the procedure of the burnt offering, Leviticus 1.3. Observe the procedure of the meal offering, Leviticus 2.1. Not to offer up leaven or honey, Leviticus 2.11. That every sacrifice be salted, Leviticus 2.13. Not to offer up anything unsalted, Leviticus 2.13. That the court of judgment shall offer up a sacrifice if they have erred in judicial pronouncement, Leviticus 4.13. That an individual shall bring a sin offering if he has sinned in error by committing a transgression the conscious violation of which is punished with execution, Leviticus 4, 27-28, to offer a sacrifice of varying value in accordance with one's means, Leviticus 5, 7, not to sever completely the head of a fowl brought as a sin offering, Leviticus 5, 8, okay, not to put olive oil or frankincense in a sin offering made with flour, Leviticus 5, 11, an individual shall bring an offering if he's in doubt whether he's committed any sin, this is called a guilt offering, Leviticus 5, 17, 19. That the remainder of the meal offering shall be eaten. Leviticus 6, 9. Not to allow the remainder of meal offerings to become leavened. Leviticus 6, 10. That the high Kohanim shall offer a meal offering daily. Leviticus 6, 13. Not to eat of the meal offering brought by the Kohanim. Leviticus 6, 16. To observe the procedure of the sin offering. Leviticus 6, 18. Not to eat of the flesh of sin offerings, the blood of which is brought with the sanctuary and sprinkled towards the veil. Leviticus 6.23 To observe the procedure of the guilt offering. Leviticus 7.1 To observe the procedure of the peace offering. Leviticus 7.11 To burn meat of the holy sacrifice that has remained over. Leviticus 7.17 Not to eat the sacrifices that are eaten beyond the appointed time for eating them. Leviticus 7.18 Not to eat of the holy things that have become unclean. Leviticus 7.19 To burn meat of the holy sacrifice that has become unclean. Leviticus 7.19 A person who is unclean shall not eat of these things which are holy. Leviticus 7.20 A Kohanim's daughter who has profaned herself shall not eat of the holy things, neither have offerings of the breast, shoulder peace offerings. Leviticus 10.14 Leviticus 22.12 Hallelujah.